Hey guys, welcome to week nine of our virtual teaching. I just want to go over things that we've done this week. So I'm going to start back with day one when we listened to the Mozart piece Eine kleine Nachtmusik, or A Little Night Music in English. You watched and listened to an orchestral performance of this piece, and it, hopefully it sounds familiar. It's been used in many movies and even some TV shows that you should be familiar with. I had you write a one to two paragraph narrative just by listening to the music. Um, sometimes I don't want you to know the piece previously in order to have an unbiased interpretation of it as you're writing your story. If you already heard this piece, perhaps you already have an image in your head and that's great too. For me, it's a lot of Bugs Bunny because that is where I first heard this piece. On Tuesday, I gave you a Google form on History Through Music, part one. Hint, hint, there will be a part two. And in here, uh, it was just some questions on what you had done the previous day. Now, you should have known that the composer that you listened to was Mozart because it was written on the YouTube video that you watched. So hopefully you got that question right. The ones that I wanted to review are more of the research-based ones, which you had to re-watch a video or even do a Google search for. So the first one that came up was the what era was Mozart from? And you had to go back to the video that you watched a few weeks ago, which I put in the Google form in case you, so you didn't have to dig for it. And if you watched the timeline and even skipped forward a little bit, you would find out that Mozart was born in 1756 and was part of the classical era of music. So his birth date was another question on there. And you can find that through a basic Google search. You can also find through a basic Google search that he died in 1791. So I know that that jumped ahead a couple of questions. So let's go back to the short article that I put in your Google form. In here, it gave you all the little details about Mozart that you needed to complete the questions afterwards. Big one was that he was a child prodigy, meaning a child who shows extreme skill in something that you wouldn't normally know as a child. For Mozart, it was his skill on piano and then later on on violin. He wrote his first piece when he was five years old. I don't know what you were doing when you were five years old, but I'm pretty sure it had something to do with crayons. He was born in Austria. Now, in the multiple choice questions, I did put Australia and Austria just to make sure you were actually reading the answers. Please be careful, sometimes your eyes skip over her letters. Austria and Australia are on opposite sides of the planet. Please do a Google search if you are unfamiliar with that. And now for the question that stumped a lot of people, which I was kind of surprised about, but then again, it still makes sense. And that's fine. You don't know what you haven't been taught yet. And that is essentially my teaching philosophy in a nutshell. So allow me to explain. The question was, Eine kleine Nachtmusik is also known as Serenade Number no. 13 for strings in G major and was written by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart in 1787. Only four of the five original movements survive. What is a movement? Now, the correct answer was uh, a movement is a section of music that belongs to a larger work, like the chapter in a book. If you're reading a storybook, like I'm reading Hardy, Harley Merlin right now, if I finish a chapter, that's not the end of the book. There's still clearly a lot more to go. That's the way movements work in music. It's a bunch of sections that are tied together in a way but they need some separation in between them. Sometimes we pause between movements, just the way you can pause between a chapter when you're reading, or sometimes pieces go straight through with multiple movements attached to each other, just like you can keep on reading a chapter after it's done. All right? When you're performing a multi-movement piece, we call it, the audience does not clap in between movements because the piece isn't over. Just like you wouldn't say, oh, what a terrible book after only finishing a chapter. It's not over. There's so much more that's going to happen. So whenever I give multiple choice answers, please know that one of them is going to be kind of ridiculous. And that was the dancing that goes along with music for this one. A movement in music is, as I said, a chapter in a book, not physical movement. When you Google musical definitions, I've said this before, and I just want to reiterate that you need to be very careful that your context is correct and that you're actually reading the definitions and the context of the definition that Google gives you. 
because sometimes the Google searches, you guys just look at the first answer that it gives you without reading the context of it, realizing it's giving you the answer to the wrong question. So it's not necessarily a matter of Google being wrong and Google being right. It's a matter of making sure that you ask the correct question and that Google answered the actual question that you asked. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, next, we're gonna move on to day three. On day three, you listened to an orchestral performance of Les Toreadors by Georges Bizet. Yes, it is French. We don't pronounce all of the letters in the word. That's a lesson for another day. Um, but just like Monday, you needed to write a one to two paragraph narrative on the music that you heard. And a lot of your answers were quite interesting. It's always very exciting to read them, especially when you don't know the piece beforehand, because then you create something that's entirely of your own imagination. And that's half the fun of this assignment. Now on Thursday, you needed to complete History Through Music Part 2 on the Google form. And this was mostly about Georges Bizet. So he was a romantic composer, if you got that wrong on the second multiple choice question. Uh, in the video, The Very Brief History of Musical Eras, Georges Bizet was born in 1838. So you can see just by that timeline that he was not the same era as Mozart, who was a classical composer. He was much later. Now, Bizet did not write as many symphonies and concertos and sonatas as Mozart, but he wrote operas. And one of his most famous operas was Carmen. The music that you listened to on Wednesday was from that opera. And I know that opera is not for everyone, but know that it is a story being told through music. When Carmen first opened in Paris, it did not receive many good reviews at all, and the critics actually told the people to stay away from it because it was not worth it. So after a few performances of this opera, Bizet actually passed away. So he never got to see it come to the fame that it became. It was only four months later when it was released in Vienna, Austria, that it was a smash hit. It was all of a sudden this amazing new performance. And it's now one of the most popular operas that is ever written. Unfortunately, Bizet never knew that audiences would come to really appreciate his masterpiece. So the questions on the Google form, the first one after that little paragraph was, where was Bizet born? And we've said a couple of times, Paris, France. He went to the Paris Conservatory. His opera Carmen was performed in Vienna after his death, but he was born and died in France. He only wrote one symphony, and that was in the second paragraph, if you were paying attention. The next question was the name of his most famous opera, which hopefully you read the paragraph. It was Carmen. It was the only one that we talked about. The other questions are simply your ability to interpret information from reading a paragraph. There were no individual research portions of this assignment, so hopefully you found it a little bit easier than the one on Mozart. But please, if you're interested in Bizet, feel free to Google him and send me any information that you find interesting. And now for the end of week nine. So there is an exit ticket today that you need to go through in order to finish off for the weekend. And it is a summary of the composers that we've spoken of this week. So hopefully at this point in the video, you remember who they are. In the exit ticket for today, there will be more music by these composers for you to listen to in addition to the questions I need you to answer. If you have any further questions, please feel free to PM me or send me an email, however you'd like to contact me. All of your PMs in Google Classroom go directly to my phone as a text message, so I will try to respond as soon as I can. Thanks very much. Enjoy the weekend. See you later.